Hey guys, it's Jane. It's Friday today, so I'm back for another Friday Reads. Well, this week I finished precisely one book. That's right, one. One, I finished one. Um, it was this one, Ream D by Nell Stevenson. Um, my excuse, if anything, is that it's it's something of a bit of a substantial read. Now, given that I've spent all week reading this book, um, I have actually developed quite a number of thoughts and I've decided that I'm going to do a review of this rather than including it in my Friday reads just to make it a little easier to find, uh, also easier to skip for those people who are sick and tired of me ranting about Neil Stevenson. So I'm going to hopefully um, record that and post it uh, today as well. Since I finished uh, Reem Deer a couple of days ago, I have, would you believe, started on Seven Eves, a reread of Seven Eves, also by Neil Stevenson. As is often my experience with Neil Stevenson, I'm finding it a much richer read second time through. I just can't help myself. I just read super quick the first time I read through one of his books. And, and you really need to spend a little bit of time with um, his ideas to really help them blossom. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I've just, I'm at 20% in Seven Eves. And um, I've just got to a really interesting part in the story um, where we're still well and truly in the first third where the politicking is going on in uh, on Earth, but most of our focus is up uh, in the International Space Station and the arc in space that's being built. There's about a year and a half to go before uh, everything goes boom. And... Um, we're getting to the point where there is this clash, culture clash going on between the get it done people and the message shaping people. And this is one of the key conflicts in the first third. Uh, in lots of people's reviews of the book, I have really wondered why they have focused so much on Doob, the character of Doob, who is this sort of science communicator. Almost every printed review, like out of a pub, proper publication uh, that's done this, has talked about Doob as kind of like the key character. And I actually got a little bit offended by that because there's so many cool women in this book uh, with central roles, but Doob, who's kind of almost the only key guy, is the one that was getting all the attention in the press. Um, but I think I may have figured out why that is in this uh, this time through, and it's because he his role is quite pivotal in a, a bridging between the get it done people and the message shaping people. He is actually, actually a full-on engineer scientist dude who at his bottom is a get it done person but because of the job that he's had for years which is a science communicator he understands the message shaping stuff. Uh, I've just read this meeting between, between Doob and the president, he's still on earth, and the president's telling him that he's got to go to space. And Doob doesn't want to go to space. He would rather die quickly uh, with his family around him than, you know, up in space alone slowly is, is basically the thoughts that's going on. He's not convinced that the space solution is going to work. Um, and he's in this meeting and suddenly realises that the political minds in this meeting don't believe it either. They actually don't believe it's going to work. And so their task for him is all about message shaping. That's um, a really interesting meeting. And then, then comes um, a meeting up in the space station between Dinah and Ivy, also about message shaping and about the fact that they have to care about what people on Earth are saying. Uh, and I'm just going to read this to you, this conversation between Ivy, who at this point is the commander of the space station, and Dinah, who is her good friend, who is a kind of robotics kind of um, expert and uh, is up in the space station as part of a public-private partnership. So her relationship to the whole mission is kind of a bit complicated politically. There's another thing Ivy said and let out the sigh. The sigh was what Ivy did when the powers that be were making her do something ridiculous. It would never show up in the transcript of a meeting, but it changed everything. I don't even want to guess, Dinah said. We've all become characters in a reality TV show, Ivy said. You might not be aware of it. Uh, nah, I, I haven't been watching much TV. Well, it's all people have to do anymore down on the ground. 
The economy is shutting down and people are just eating beans and entertaining themselves with screen time. Okay. I've been asked to pay more attention to message shaping. Message shaping. What's that? Ivy let out the sigh. Oh, okay, never mind, Dinah said. People want to know what became of their uppity little shit kicker. Which I'll just explain here. I'll drop that in. That is, that's Ivy and Dinah code for Dinah. Dinah is the uppity little shit kicker. People want to know what became of their uppity little shit kicker. Really? Yeah, Ivy said. People like their uppity little shit kicker. They remember the thing you did with Tekla. I don't want to hear about it. Anyway, people are asking, where is Plucky Robot Girl and her mechanical menagerie? Oh, that explains some weird emails I've gotten. From random strangers? No, from my own family. I don't read the ones from random strangers. How about you, Ivy? What's your role in the reality TV show? Ivy stared at her coolly. I'm the uptight bitch who can't handle it. Oh. To American viewers, I'm not fully American. And to Chinese viewers, I'm a banana. I'm sorry, Ivy. That's the bad news. Okay, well, what's the good news? All the people saying mean things about me on the internet, they're all going to be dead in 433 days. Okay, so, um, Seven Eves, I'm, I'm just loving it and I, I'm hopeful that I'm going to have something a bit more substantial to say about it this time around after I finish the reread. Before I stop with Seven Eves, I watched a fantastic video that Monica, whose channel title I've forgotten but I'll link it down below, made about Seven Eves. It's spoiler, 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 spoilerific. So you don't want to watch this one if you have not read the book. Um, but if you have read the book, it's one of the most interesting, substantial discussions of the book that I've seen. Two of the things that she spends a fair bit of time talking about, and she talks about lots of things, but two of the things that she spends quite a bit of time talking about are grief and how that is um, portrayed and imagined and experienced through the book. And also um, she spends quite a bit of time teasing out a number of different threads of the sexual politics of the book. So if you have um, read the book, I strongly encourage you to go over and have a look at Monica's video. Okay, when and if I finish Seven Eves, I've got this one from the library, the second of the Glenda Lark books after The Lasker's Dagger. Thief, traitor, hero, and I'm looking forward to that. I've also, on my e-reader from the library, I've got the second book uh, following The Three-Body Problem, The Dark Forest, so I'm really excited about getting to that too. So that's it. That's me. That's what I'm reading. Um, that's what I'm going to be reading when and if I ever finish Seven Eves. What about you? What are you reading at the moment? I'd love to hear. I hope you're well, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!